it wasn't that long ago that all of the music criticism, let's say, that was that was published in, in, in newspapers was about concerts, was was not, in fact, recommending an experience that you could go and have, right. but trying to give you a little piece of something that was never going to happen again, that you couldn't have. Um, yeah. And theater criticism has some of that, too, and certainly dance criticism, yeah. Yeah. you know, dance being the, 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 the most fragile, the most ephemeral. What's missing from, say, a reproduction, if you go online right. and you call up the work of art is exactly the betweenness yeah. that we've been yeah. talking about. Yeah. This perceptual reality between the spectator and the work of art or the listener or the reader that be has to be, I think, part of of yeah. the review or the analysis or whatever it is. And 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 I think in, in, in my case, just because I, I like to read a lot of criticism, I've always read um, and, and love to read uh, writers who I like writing about art forms that I might not necessarily know or care very much about. I mean, I'm very ignorant about classical music, um, but, you know, I always read Alex Ross in The New Yorker, um, and I would rather, in a way, listen to, read him, you know, on, on why Wagner is, 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 is so wonderful than listen to Wagner. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, that's right. So then in that case, the critical work supplants the actual the actual yeah, art form. Yeah. Right. 